Good evening. Boris Johnson is ready to put up millions of pounds to buy off Friday's bus strike. But London taxpayers would pick up the bill through money set aside to pay for the Olympics. Thousands of bus drivers are set to walk out in two days' time, having been denied a £500 bonus for working during the Games. The mayor says more than £8 million is available for them, but only if they don't strike. But tonight, there are no talk scheduled between the union, the bus companies and Transport for London to discuss this new offer. And they all say it's somebody else's responsibility. The full story now from our Olympics correspondent, Simon Harris. Ian is saying tonight that it's down to you, it's down to TfL, it's down to the mayor. You've shown us the money. Time to show us the meeting and get all these different parties together to talk about this money. The money's there, but nobody's taking responsibility for the talks. And it's so complex with the bus companies, with TfL, with the mayor and the... Next tonight, the parents of a teenager who died from anorexia nervosa say there needs to be more awareness of the dangers of the illness. Anna Wood was 16 when she collapsed and died. Our health correspondent, Liz Wickham, has been speaking to her parents. Liz, very brave of Anna's parents to talk about that water load. What does that mean? Water load. A replica of Stonehenge has popped up in central London, except this one isn't made of stone, it's made of old cars. Well, to find out why... 37 days to go to the start of London's Olympics, and by now most competitors might be content with just fine-tuning their preparations. But cyclist Bradley Wiggins has other ideas before the Londoner takes part in the Games. He's aiming, of course, to become the first Briton to win the Tour de France. That lasts three weeks and ends just five days before London's opening ceremony. Our sports reporter Natalie Perks caught up with Bradley at his training camp in Mallorca. Next, a dream comes true for a survivor of the July the 7th bombings. Martine Wiltshire lost both her legs in the blast on board the tube train at Oldgate. She always believed she had survived for a reason and she dreamt of competing in London's Paralympic well. She's made it. Martine is in the sitting volleyball team for 2012. She spoke to our sports reporter, Sally Williams. Finally tonight, Mike Perham hit the record books when he was just 17 years old by becoming the youngest person to sail around the world. For some people, that might be enough, but not him, because Mike, who's from Hertfordshire, is now aiming to complete a triple round-the-world record, Marcus Powell explains.